Hi everyone, John here from All Miniatures Great and Small, and today we're going to be doing a book overview for Flames of War. This time we're going to be looking at Bulge American. This is the new source book as Flames of War takes another step forward in the late war period and moving past Bagration. It's a pretty exciting time, particularly if you like American forces, and it's going to herald in the use of late late war tanks for all sides which is kind of exciting everyone likes to use the the greatest and best um, units available from time to time so bulge american um, initial impressions does not disappoint it does cover a lot of ground though um, the title bulge american is actually somewhat misleading because this book just uh, does not just cover the bulge it covers other periods as well in fact, the book covers uh, Aracourt as well, and a lot of the activity immediately uh, preceding the Battle of the Bulge, as well as the time period afterwards, um, included in the old source book called uh, Bridget Ramagan. So you get late, late war stuff like um, Pershings and Super Pershings, which weren't even available in the Bulge. Per se. So it's a cool time and uh, there's a lot of stuff here. So for those version 3 players out there, this one book is actually covering or replacing uh, multiple version 3 source books. Um, the, there were several Bulge books, the Bridget Ramagan book, uh, all covered this time period. What we are leaping over is Operation Market Garden. Um, and I really haven't seen a um, post or anything directly from Battlefront as to why they skipped over it and if it's something they're going to circle back to eventually or if they're just skipping over it this, this time period, I'm not sure. Um, a lot of stuff can be used for um, Market Garden, but um, the fact that we're skipping over it is an interesting choice. That said, I am primarily an American player, so I'm kind of excited to, to get this release. And... Um, I'm just going to go over really quickly what companies come in the uh, book because we get a lot of cool stuff. So for the uh, Bulge American Force, and this book is broken up into different forces, the first grouping is called the Bulge um, stuff. You get the 4th Armored Division, which gives you veteran M4 uh, Sherman Late Tank Company and a veteran M24 Chaffee Company. You also get the 7th Armored Division, which also includes a late Sherman Tank Company and Chaffee Company. And we'll talk a little bit about those differences there, but it's a, a difference in the uh, skill. In the uh, Bridget Ramagan section, we get the Battle Worn Armored Rifle Company. Um, and Battle Warren, we'll talk more about that later as well, is basically just a, a lower motivation. They're veterans that have been on the front for a long time and uh, just, just don't have the morale that they used to. Um, you also have the um, 2nd Infantry Division, which you can be run as a Battle Wary Rifle Company. Um, then you have more... Um, bulge based things you have the 101st airborne division in bastone which includes a bastone parachute rifle company as well as uh, a base bastone glider rifle company then as we race to the rhine we have the long awaited at least for me uh, m18 hellcat tank destroyer company as well as the m36 jackson tank destroyer company uh, in support, then we have all those units in support. So that's the, um, you know, that's the companies or, or formations you can run. So you have basically two versions of the Sherman, two versions of the Chaffee. You have a armored as well as leg uh, rifle company. You have airborne. You have a glider infantry as well as two flavors of tank destroyers. So you're really covering quite a bit, particularly when, and we'll see this uh, in a moment, uh, how flexible some of these formations are. Next in the book, we talk about the special rules for the Americans. So some of these are uh, pretty standard and you're already gonna be familiar with them. Um, you have stabilizer, which any American player knows that. If you're new to Americans, basically, you suffer a plus one penalty to hit. Uh, when you're shooting, if you moved in the movement step. 
That does sound like a penalty, but you'll realize most Americans don't um, have a reduced rate of fire for moving full speed. So basically a Sherman's going to shoot twice, um, and with stabilizer it's just plus one harder to hit. Whereas most other tanks for other nations are just going to be shooting once if they moved instead of twice. So um, stabilizer is a fantastic rule. You have to use it, but um, th there's no reason typically you wouldn't want to. Then we have a new rule. This was a, in the old version called smooth ride. And this applies to the awesome, awesome uh, Easy 8 tank. So it's a, that's a, a model of Sherman. Uh, the Easy 8 does not suffer a plus one penalty to hit uh, for stabilizers if they move less than four inches in the movement step. So you just won't need to move a little bit, move up to a hedge. You can still fire your two shots with no penalty um, as long as you keep that under four inches. So very cool thing to do. Um, you're not going to be advancing super fast if you're using that rule, but it's uh, one of the bonuses that the Easy 8 Sherman gets um, above all other um, Sherman models. You've got Battle Tank, special rule for tank destroyers, basically. It's a, a penalty for missions that have deep reserves. Normally, you can only have uh, you know X number of units with a front armor four or more. Uh, a Hellcat only has a front armor two, but it's still going to count against that limit. Um, front armor two would normally get it under that limit, and you could spam those. And they don't want you to be able to do that. Um, the last few rules are pretty generic, and we we don't need to really worry about those. All right, the first company we're going to talk about or look at is the M4 Sherman Late Veteran Tank Company. So um, this is a pretty cool formation. Um, basically, in the HQ, you can take two tanks. Now, I'm going to talk about the upgrades in the HQ, but this also applies to the uh, normal Sherman tank platoons you can take as well. Um, so basically, you start out with two M4 Late Shermans. And the big difference of a late Sherman versus an earlier Sherman, like a D-Day Sherman, is it's a front armor 7 instead of a 6. Uh, they have protected ammo, so they remount on a 3+, plus, and they have a tactics rating of 3+. plus. All right, so you can uh, replace or upgrade either of those tanks with uh, Easy 8s, um, or you could upgrade them with uh, just a regular 76mm gun. And you can upgrade one of those to a jumbo. And that jumbo could either be a 75 millimeter version or a 76 millimeter version. So right there in the HQ company, you can take you could take two vanilla ones, you could take an easy eight and a jumbo, you could take two easy eights, you could take two Sherman 76 lates, and so on. There, there's a lot of ways you can do that depending on how you want to. Uh, you know, how you want to adjust with the points. I am also going to mention, because I think this is important, um, here is that the command cards, I think for this release, if you're a serious American player, um, are essential. The command cards, I don't uh, feel I have always been essential for everybody, uh, for all the previous books. So some of them had some good cards, but this one I think is essential. And for two reasons. One is you can downgrade any late 75 millimeter Sherman to the D-Day version, just a regular M4 Sherman. So because you're spending all these extra points to upgrade to Sherman, to Easy 8s, to 76 millimeter, to Jumbos, the ones you don't upgrade, you can downgrade to the D-Day version Sherman and save yourself a few points there. Um, that's a card, it's not in the book though, so you do need the command card for that. Okay, um, the company itself, you have that HQ that we just talked about. You have two compulsory slots. The first compulsory slot is either a um, Sherman late tank platoon or an M26 Pershing tank platoon. The second mandatory slot is an, in another M4 Sherman platoon or M5 Stewart or Chaffee. Then you have a few additional slots which aren't required. One is an additional Sherman platoon. Then you have an artillery section that can either be a assault gun Sherman platoon or a calliope Sherman platoon. So you have two options in that one slot. You could take a super Pershing and you can take the ever popular 
uh, always essential armored um, mortar platoon, the 81 millimeter mortar. So that is, um, you know, there's two that's required, um, but you can add four more. So there's six slots, not including the HQ in that formation, which is just fantastic. All right, the uh, M4 Sherman platoon is pretty good. You can take up to five. There's nothing new there. They're all the late version. You can upgrade any or all of them with Easy 8s. You can upgrade any or all of them with just regular 76 millimeter turret. Um, and you can replace up to one with a jumbo. And again, it's either you can choose either a 75 or 76. There's a lot of thought that's going to go into designing these platoons, and I'm going to do a separate video on that. But um, needless to say, again, you, you've got a lot of options on how you build these platoons, and each platoon in the force could be a different uh, variation, right? Um, so, so you have a lot of options. Another cool thing they did, which you couldn't do in the previous version, is you can have regular Pershings in a list with the Super Pershing which I think is, is going to be pretty cool. I mean, that's a ton of points, but um, again, I think it could be pretty cool. All right, so you've got that. Um, the Pershings are also here. So you can take up to five Pershings, two to five Pershings. Think of the Pershing as uh, the American Panther tank, because really that's what it is. It has the same gun. Um, it's not quite the same range, but it's 36-inch range. Um, so the Panther slightly outranges it, but it's the same thing. Uh, shooting two on the halted, one moving, AT-14, three plus firepower. So stat-wise, just like a, a Panther or a Tiger. Um, they're hit on four. They have a confident uh, motivation. They're trained skill, but they do have Yankee ingenuity for a three plus tactics. And their armor is front nine, side six, top armor two. So they're a little bit better armored um, than a Panther on the side and top. But otherwise, they are, uh, you know, front armor nine is the same as a, a Tiger. Um, so they're not as well armored as a Tiger, but they are somewhat better armored than a panther. Front armor though is nine for all of them, and that's typically where most of your gunfighting um, or your, so your direct fire hits. So knowing that that's the same. Um, again, you could take a super Pershing in addition in this formation, so I wanna talk about that tank because I think it looks awesome. There's only one ever built, and I have a feeling it's gonna show up in a lot of lists. Um, the super Pershing is expensive though, but um, you know, you could buy, I think, like three normal Shermans for a Super Pershing, um, but you do get a Front Armor 13 American unit, which is really nice. Um, what that means, Front Armor 13, is you're impervious from the front to um, Panther and Tiger guns. Of course, once the German um, <laughs> bulge books arrive, you're going to have King Tigers and probably Yog tigers and all those things that have a much much higher at that is going to make uh front armor 13 even laughable uh but the um cool thing about the super Pershing is its gun it's got a 48 inch gun anti-tank 18 three plus firepower so that's um going to be pretty scary I, I mean technically it might be able to threaten i don't know how they're going to point the um the king tiger yet as far as armor goes but if it's, it stays the same as like the elephant did at 16 um this gun is still going to have trouble i mean theoretically it could, it could bail them out at long range but um that's it um so the the super pershing is cool though it, it gives you a unit that panthers and tigers can't really hurt from the front which is pretty pretty big um so you do have that you can take uh Again, in this platoon, like uh, Stewart's and, and things like that, the 81 millimeter mortar, always a good uh, include for, uh, you know, a, a very few number of points. Just to have that extra platoon to anchor you, hide and provide that uh, very important smoke line for you to move up your, your tanks. Okay, so that is the um, Sherman Late uh, veteran formation. Next up, we have the veteran... M24 Chaffee Tank Company. The Chaffee is one of my favorite tanks, probably after the um, M4 Easy 8. Uh, the formation itself, you have an HQ of a uh, Chaffee, and that is two Chaffees. And then you've got uh, your two required platoons of Chaffees, and those can be from two to five. 
the third platoon can either be Chaffee's or a late Sherman platoon. And then they can also take armored 81 millimeter mortars. And then in the artillery slot, they can either get uh, M8 Scott assault guns or M4 Sherman assault guns. So um, not quite as many options as the veteran Sherman company we just looked at, but uh, still enough here to anchor the formation and not have your formation broken quite so easily. Okay, um, the Chaffee itself, we'll talk a little bit about the Chaffee. Think Stuart. It's, it's like a Stuart. It's front armor four, side armor three, top armor one. So really you're not buying it for the armor, uh, but it is a fast tank. So it's like the Stuart. Um, the gun though is like the Sherman. So it has a 20 inch, 28 inch range, halted, moving rate of fire of two, anti-tank 10, three plus firepower, smoke and stabilizer. So the best way to think of the Chaffee is a Stuart with a Sherman gun and you can't go wrong. So it's fast, it's a flanking unit um, and it looks good while it's flanking. It's a very cool <laughs> looking tank. Um, okay, so that is our um, look at the Chaffee Veteran Company. Then we've got um, another Sherman company in the book. So this one is uh, different in that it's not veteran, so they're not calling it veteran. Um, that means it's hit on, the main difference is it's gonna hit on threes instead of fours. Um, so think of them as like Soviets or German SS. The formation here is pretty straightforward. It is, um, you've got the HQ, which is just like before. You've got two uh, Shermans in the HQ. You have two mandatory Sherman uh, platoons as your two slots. Your third uh, armored slot is optional. You can take either another Sherman platoon, Stewart's or Chaffee's. Then an artillery, obviously the 81 millimeter mortar, armored mortars. And then artillery, the same thing. You could take a Sherman assault gun or Sherman calliope. So the interesting thing here is these are going to be cheaper because they're hit on three plus. But in the formation, you cannot take um, Pershings. So you couldn't take a, a Pershing as part of the core formation. Um, so that, that's pretty interesting. So the other thing that these tanks lose besides being hit on three is their skill is still four plus, but they don't get uh, Yankee ingenuity, which is, uh, which is interesting. Um, the upgrades though for these platoons, like the Sherman platoons are the same. You can throw in jumbos, easy eights, Sherman 76s, all that good stuff. So uh, pretty cool. Then scrolling on, we have the M24 Chaffee tank company. So this is the not veteran version. This is exactly like laid out exactly like the veteran version as far as the platoons you can take. So you're good there. Um, the primary difference is, I think these guys also have a um, blood and guts last stand of three plus and their last stands a little bit better, but they are hit on threes. They don't have Yankee ingenuity. So their skill is just four plus across the board and so on. So, um, very cool. If you want to run a horde of American armor, you look at those two uh, companies. All right, then you have the Battle Wary Armored Rifle Company. So Armored Rifle Companies are one of my favorite uh, forces in Flames of War. I love it because I think an Armored Rifle Company is, um, you know, just uh, has it all. I mean, it's, it's got pretty much everything you need. Machine guns, anti-tank, mortar, uh, vehicle, it's cool. All right, so the Battle Wary Armored Rifle Company has an HQ, which is pretty standard. It's just uh, some dudes and a half track. Two compulsory armored rifle platoons. You can take a third. And then um, the other units in the formation are a machine gun platoon, an anti-tank uh, gun platoon, an assault gun platoon, which is the uh, Scott, the, the M8 Scott and then an 81 millimeter mortar platoon. So you can really buff those guys up with these other um, optional uh, unit or uh, formation, not formations, these optional platoons uh, to keep them on the board. The main challenge with these battle weary uh, formations is um, their motivation. So they're, these guys are hit on fours. So they're, you know, they're careful, but their motivation is reluctant five plus. 
So that is, um, that's can be pretty tough to deal with. Um, but we do have, uh, they do have a blood and guts rally of four plus. They're also trained at a four plus, uh, as well as having Yankee ingenuity at a three plus, but the reluctance, what you got to get over with it, um, with a five plus reluctant, that motivation would be used for things like, um, trying to counterattack and assault, um, and, and things like that. Now the, the, um, Blood and Guts Rally means if they're pinned down, they still have a 50-50 chance of unpinning, which is good. That Blood and Guts Rally of 4 plus helps. But that motivation, again, can really... You can't count on these guys like going back and forth, back and forth in an assault. You might get one, if you're lucky, two rounds of assault uh, before these guys are going to want to break off. But with that said, it's a cheaper way to get uh, an armored rifle platoon. And then if you want a more veteran one, you could look at the D-Day version, uh, which is, you know, the, we'll say, elite version. Okay. Next up, we have the Battle Wary Rifle Company. Uh, same concept. These guys are hit on fives. Um, there's a lot of um, options you can add. You have the HQ plus two Battle Wary Rifle Platoons. That's the required units. You can add a third. You can add a couple of mortar platoons. You can add a Sherman platoon or a 105 millimeter cannon platoon, machine gun, uh, or and two up to two 57 millimeter anti-tank gun platoons. So you can add again quite a bit to that with a um, you know with a full rifle platoon costing less than 10 points. Um, you can really stack your core formation with a lot of things so that your formation doesn't run away or doesn't break that way but you're still having to deal with that reluctant five plus motivation the rifle platoons themselves are pretty straightforward 10 stands plus a bazooka you can upgrade one bazooka you can add up to two machine guns um, and you can add one heavy machine gun stand so you can actually make that platoon quite beefy for just a few more points um, so there you go. Those are kind of the battle-worn platoons, which, um, again, give you cheap stuff, but that motivation, you have to deal with that motivation, which can be done. On the other extreme now, we've got, we're looking at the Airborne. So the Airborne is pretty cool. We've got a parachute rifle company, a Bastogne parachute rifle company. You've got the HQ, uh, two required parachute rifle platoons, plus a third as an option. <clears throat> then you have in support 81 millimeter mortars or some artillery 75 or 105 uh, 57 millimeter anti-tank gun platoon and a jeep recon platoon so again um, you got a, a few options there to help anchor that uh, that formation the parachute rifle platoon is a similar makeup like seven infantry teams a 60 millimeter mortar plus a bazooka team you can add a second bazooka team, you can add two light machine gun teams. So uh, again, you can beef those uh, platoons up to a pretty decent size. Then you also have the Glider, Bastone Glider Rifle Company, which is very sim similar. However, you only get an HQ plus two mandatory Glider Rifle Platoons. You don't have the option to take a third Glider Rifle Platoon. Uh, then you have pretty much similar options. You've got an 81 millimeter mortar platoon, machine gun platoon, 57 millimeter anti-tank gun platoon, and in the artillery, 75 or 105 millimeter artillery. So again, you can uh, anchor that, that company, which is always a good idea. Next, we're looking at the M18 tank destroyer company, the Hellcat. Um, the Hellcat is one of my favorite units in the game. I think it's just an awesome looking vehicle and I think it works pretty well in the, um, in game. I think it's a good unit in game. So the tank destroyer company for the Hellcat, you have a mandatory, uh, tank destroyer HQ, uh, two mandatory tank destroyer platoons plus an optional third. Then you can take a couple of, well, you can take up to three M20 security sections. So um, interesting formation in that the, um, the HQ obviously isn't a tank, so it's pretty cheap. It's just two uh, M20 of those armored scout cars. Then the 
Hellcats themselves are pretty uh, pretty good. Um, they are less than M10s. They don't have the armor of the M10, but they are hit on four. They are uh, four plus uh, confident motivation, three up uh, veteran skill, which is very important for uh, using seek, strike, and destroy when you're trying to roll a three up to blitz and a three up to scoot and shoot. Uh, they do have a 76 millimeter gun, which is pretty good. It is uh, rate of fire two, halted one, anti tank 12, three plus firepower, and then no HE rule. So, pretty standard, standard stuff there. Their gun does not have the uh, stabilizer like the Shermans do, though, so uh, it's only rate of fire one when moving. Hopefully you can leverage the Seek, Strike, and Destroy rule and that 3-up skill to Blitz and uh, still be able to shoot at your full rate of fire. Um, you can take up to 4 into the platoon. You either take 2 or 4, um, but they're pretty solid tanks. And again, being less than M10s, it makes it plausible to have um, you know, uh, a full platoon, or sorry, a full formation of 8 Hellcats and the HQ for under 40 points. So it might be a good second formation to add to something like a rifle, um, you know, a battle wear worn rifle uh, company and something or something along those lines. All right, so that's the uh, Hellcat. Then you also get the M36 Tank Destroyer Company. So this one is cool too. So the M36 is basically kind of like an evolution of the M10. Uh, tank destroyer and the the formation actually shows that you get an HQ of uh, um, Again the two m20 scout cars then you have two required slots one of them has to be m36 tank destroyers uh, The other one can be m36 s or m 10s and then there's a third optional one Which can also be split or taken as one or the other and then you can take three of those veteran security sections as well So you can really have lots of Jeeps and armored cars uh, the M36, just to talk about that one real quick, it is, um, think of it as an M10. It's hit on a 4, it has a front armor of 5, side armor of 2, top armor of 0. Uh, the main difference is that it has a 90mm gun instead of a 76mm gun like the M10. So that means it has a, um, a anti-tank 14 so it's halted rate of fire two, moving rate of fire one, anti-tank 14, three plus firepower, range 36 inches. So almost as good as a Panther or Tiger gun. And at AT-14, those are very dangerous to Panthers and Tigers. Uh, so that's one of the main things it's doing. Okay, so that is our discussion about the uh, formations you get. Let's just hit the support real quick here. Um, you can take uh, M8 Greyhound Cavalry Recon Platoon, a solid unit, uh, pretty inexpensive. You can take a couple of Greyhounds, a couple of Jeeps. One of the Jeeps could have a mortar in it, um, a great harassing unit, uh, and uh, you can you can take several of them because they are so inexpensive. Uh, you have the M5 Stewart Caval Cavalry Recon Platoon, which is basically kind of the same. Um, basically what happened is as the Chaffee came in, they had extra Stewarts, so the Stewarts were bumped to Recon uh, to replace those M8 uh, armored cars. So this is basically a Stewart plus some Jeeps and one unit as a, as a Recon. And of course they get Scout, Spearhead, and Observer, which is pretty nice. There's the three inch uh, tank destroyer platoon, which is basically the, the wheeled gun uh, and the the gun itself is the same as the gun on the uh, M10 tank destroyer, any tank 12. Um, you have 105 millimeter artillery battery, an M7 Priest artillery battery, and the M12s make another appearance, the 155 millimeter artillery battery. What I don't see in here is the um, long tom 155 millimeter artillery battery. Um, and I don't see that in the book. Maybe it's a card and I've missed it. Uh, you also take the T27 Xylophone or rocket launcher battery. So it's the like American Katyusha's uh, Grasshopper Observer plane um, and a mixed anti-aircraft platoon and a P47 Thunderbolt. So quite a good um, number of support units. 
there are so many regular formations, again, you can use a black box um, unit as support for another formation. So, you know, if you are running Hellcats, you could pull in a platoon of Shermans and vice versa, which is cool. All right, uh, so there you go. That is the uh, formations. I just want to talk a little bit more about the book because there are a cool thing. One of the, the neat things I like about these books is that a lot of them include uh, missions. And this includes uh, three missions. It includes roadblock, uh, which recreates the blocking and delaying positions manned by infantry units hit by the first waves of the offensive. Uh, elastic defense, Recreates battles on the perimeter of Bastogne, where a porous infantry line would allow tanks to pass to be dealt with by supporting armor, only to firm up when faced with enemy infantry. And then Nuts. Uh, recreate the defensive battles of encircled troops as they hold off the enemy until relieving forces arrive. Uh, so there is like a little uh, linked campaign, and you use those new missions and, and some of the older missions. Um, and it looks like fun. I, I like that it includes different missions in the source book. Um, there's also rules for weather, uh, fighting in the fog, fighting in the winter, um, you know, frozen ris uh, rivers, ice, snowstorms, blizzards, things like that. Um, otherwise, there's a painting guide, there's a product, um, you know, there's an advertisement for all the, the products. Uh, so we'll leave it at there. So the last thing I'm going to do, last thing I'll wrap up is just my uh, my take on the book and any must-haves from this book. So I think it must-have. If you're an American player, it's a must-have. Uh, you got to get this book. It's it's really cool. You're getting some cool formations. You finally get the ultimate version of the Sherman tank. It's like a uh, Pokemon that's evolved to its ultimate version. Uh, the M4 Easy 8 is um, a really cool uh, tank and brings a lot. It's expensive and it's still only front armor 7, but it brings a lot of cool things to the table. Uh, so I would recommend that. Another cool thing, exciting thing about this release is what's coming with it. You're getting plastic um, Easy 8s, you're getting plastic uh, Chaffees. Uh, which previously those were both metal and resin, which is, is fantastic. Um, I think the Pershings were already plastic. The uh, M4 A3 Lates were also plastic. Um, but it's, oh, the, uh, well, what is it? The Jumbos are plastic. You can't forget those. So I'm really looking forward to getting plastic versions and upgrading some of my Americans to uh, you know the the uh, the plastics and replacing my metal and resin. The tanks themselves uh, look great. Um, I think they're going to play well on the battlefield. We're going to have a lot more content about the bulge one just because it's a time period I'm excited about. So uh, you're going to have to hear me rant. Well, if you choose, um, and get some battle reports in. We do have a a couple of uh, battle scheduled. Uh, where I'm going to take out some Shermans and and uh, see what we can do. So it's a it's an exciting time to be an American player to uh, like the late war period, and uh, it only kind of wets the whistle for the British and the German uh, bulge books. What those are going to bring, I'm kind of excited to see because really we're getting end stage stuff. So we should get most, if not all, of the the super late German stuff. Uh, and uh, the British stuff as well. So I'm excited. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, overview of the American Bulge book. If you did, please do leave us a comment down below. Give us a like and subscribe. That always helps the channel. If you like our Flames of War content, do check out our Patreon. Uh, Patreon um, subscribers will get access to a battle report exclusive to them every month, and that will include... Uh, bulge battle reports as we move forward. As always, thanks for watching and keep on gaming.